Welcome back to Melbourne Strength Coaches Podcast, number one in the hearts, number one in the charts. We are back with another ad for our new training app. It is our most affordable training option. So if you've wanted to get involved with us at Strength Culture and Coaching, but price has been a barrier, this will be perfect for you. And if you're looking for some accountability and structure with your training, the app will be the perfect option to get on board with us. Make sure you jump on it quickly. We have a code LAUNCH50 that is available until November 9th. Get in quick while it's 50% off and enjoy the gains. Welcome back to Melbourne Strength Cultures Podcast, number one in the hearts, number one in the charts. We're here with a guest episode. We've got Louis from nine to five. G'day lads, how are we? Very well. Thanks we're very actually- much for having me. Yeah, we're, um, I, I just want to open it and say that we're inspired by what you boys do. <laughs> There's a few things. Obviously, uh, Gabe put up a post yesterday. You guys, I don't want to put the figure out there, but uh, you guys were like packaging orders and shit. And yeah. it was in the hundreds. And I'm like, hundreds of orders. And I was yeah. like, fuck, these guys are doing it. Like, we're trying to move in this direction. But you guys are fucking showing the way. It's awesome. Gabe's good putting it out saying we packed Hundreds. He, yeah, yeah, no, it's me it packing you. it. <laughs> he just came in, took a story, and then bug it off. And me and the other workers. But yeah, no, it's good. It, we, I think, we pinch ourselves all the time, and and we have a huge sense of kind of. Well, I personally do have a huge sense of imposter syndrome. I can't believe this is my life at the moment. So riding it for as long as we can. Yeah, how long have you guys been running it for? Oh, I suppose like two to three years now. But it it really took off for us like when we got on TikTok, which is kind of six months into it. Um, and yeah, and it's just been like a hectic ride. Were you, from there. Were you, did you move to TikTok specifically to grow it, or was it a it's just like a you know like we had Instagram, we had Facebook? It's like oh well, what's next? Uh, we had the website. It's like what's next? Well, I suppose TikTok. It kind of came with like a bit of a I don't know a feeling behind it that was like oh you can't get on TikTok, and then we did get on TikTok, and it was very worthwhile. <laughs> what do you mean you can't get on TikTok? <laughs> like it's just like it's a bit lame, you know. Yeah. Like TikTok's a dancing Dancey, app, especially yeah. back then. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, it's very good for us. I keep telling Donnie we need to get into dances, but he won't. Yeah, he, he keeps overruling us. Yeah, I'd agree. You should do. <laughs> yeah, dances. we should do some dances. Yeah, we can do some Did you like dance? That. Uh, mate, I'll do anything. That yeah. you choose, to be honest. Uh, I feel yeah. like you get I to a point. That. I feel like a ve- yeah. like you start with all these things where you like, and yeah. it's just not that you guys do dances, but it's like <laughs> I'm not going to do that. We can't do that. But then eventually you yeah. start, and you're getting it. You start getting the dopamine hits, and you're just like, "Fuck it! What else can we do? Yeah, yeah. What else?" No, what like years ago, it's like, "Oh, I'm not selling out." I'm not selling out. It's like, "All right, this and is then it." Next this thing, you're it. wearing bike shorts in the gym. Yeah. You want to build? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I've done some crook shit already. I'm just like, "Oh fuck!" You chase it. Yeah. Oh no, we chase it harder. Don't worry. You lose all morals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what what was uh what was some of those initial sort of like hesitations then? Like what were you? Oh, so well, I mean, initially we said we weren't going to get our faces on social media. Like, oh really? Through, through the brand, so like through Nine to Five Fitness, it was just going to be all apparel, a faceless brand. Yeah, faceless, yeah. and like we're going to do this apparel, and then like within two weeks, that was out the window. Yeah, um, very difficult if you got a podcast and you impossible. Yeah, yeah. yeah the <laughs> podcast came a lot later. Um, oh, and right, then yeah, enough. and then we yeah. made TikTok. Obviously, oh, so you guys had the brand first, and oh, then yeah, did heaps. the podcast, mate. We started with. Uh, with socks we started selling socks that was our first item of clothing oh really um which you know you can only what 20 friends and family we had 200 socks so yeah and we like right we got to hustle here we got on tiktok and then we started getting more people buying socks yeah and then we yeah. got into like yeah more and more apparel programming and was socks just the podcast. easiest i don't know what it was about the socks to be honest i you think guys we, are sock lads yeah i don't know <laughs> what it was it was like the um we kind of went with cycling socks i suppose so yeah but yeah, it's random. I wouldn't recommend that for anyone starting a yeah. business. James has no. got a hard on for socks. Oh, I, I want to get yeah. mad socks. I reckon yeah. we could fucking. Yeah. I reckon we yeah. could change the sock market. Yeah. And strength, That's what we said. Strength to be change. We yeah. still got our first order. <laughs> you still got your first yeah. order. Yeah. Of Two socks. years later. All right, maybe yeah. maybe I need to change our, our pivot. Pivot the idea, boys. <laughs> the sock market. What What do you reckon we can change the sock? What's your no? Idea well, I was just market? thinking when we launch our apparel that a really good like I was I was watching listening to a podcast and the and the guy was like you need to have these add ons that fill the stock yeah like yeah. or fill the basket sorry so like just little like little things that people pay to then increase the price per sale yeah and the socks was the easiest one they'd be like 15 bucks two pack fucking bam have Mate, some socks yeah it makes sense for you guys for sure yeah, but like exactly. starting a business go. off the back of socks yeah. is not a good tough. idea just but for sure yeah tough you so you started it. with a brand and then you got into the podcast and the podcast just took off yeah so like i was a huge fan like like dill buckley dylan friends mm. and like joe rogan and so on um and and i was like saying to gab like let's get into podcasting and he, he, he's a huge numbers man. So he's kind of running through the numbers. It's going to be like, you know, six grand to, to get into it because we wanted to do it properly. Oh, the equipment and stuff. Yeah, all yep. the equipment. Um, so he's like, mm, nah, not sure. And then I really pushed it. 
And then we started and, and it was just like the best thing. It really kind of solidified the community, you know, like anyone who listens to a podcast or an hour of you talking every week really believes in the brand or, or hates you. Um, so <laughs> it's good to kind of identify that and, and have them involved. Don't worry, we've got them both. Yeah. We've got both sides yeah. of that as Don't well. Uh, they're the loyal fans. Yeah, they're exactly. Loyal, the loyal, yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I, it's funny you say that Gab's a numbers man. I actually get that from him, just oh, like in mate. the gym and stuff. Like he, he's always just constantly like, yeah. He has he has an Excel spreadsheet for everything. <laughs> he got over a breakup on the back of an Excel spreadsheet. Oh really? Yeah. Pros and cons so, list, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Mostly cons, I think. So. Yeah, mostly cons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So then you. So I just want to keep following this story because I, yeah. I actually find it so fascinating. So you get into the podcast and then you hit the TikTok, or is it? Nah, TikTok much before podcast. Yeah. Um. So I always thought it was the podcast first. Nah, podcast came pretty late to be honest. We've been what we're eighty six episodes in now. Yeah. So. And that's one a week, so not too long. But um, yeah, so so TikTok, which is like making workout videos, trying to help people and so on. Um, and then podcasts, we're still doing the TikToks. And then we realized that you can cut these clips up from the podcast and that's like pretty much our content. Yeah. Um, so like we've really developed into that and like the nine to five content is very podcast based. And then we've got our own like personal kind of like brands, I Your suppose two you brands, could say. Yeah. yeah, and like I'm doing more footy and running kind of thing. Gab's into the powerlifting kind of things. So. Yeah, and we were just talking off air, but um, it I'll I'll read I'll I'll make the statement again, but I feel like we're in a new phase where like call it an influencer, but when I think of like health and fitness influencers, I always just go to bodybuilding and powerlifting. That's mm. all I think about. And then there's this new group and I don't know if it's in other countries as well, like there's other sports or whatever, but I see like the you and Gabe and then uh, Prime Train, yeah. who also started and you're living with him now. I would love to even just discuss about that. Yeah, but, we will. Um, Prime Train and then the Shep Mates boys who, who literally just started with like commentary of, yeah. of AFL clips or whatever. And they Tubs. just went berserk. Like they're... They, yeah, yeah, they're killing it. They're yeah. killing it on on the ba- yeah commentary and and they they do it like they're they're actually really good actors. So yeah. they get brand deal after brand deal, and they they're like very like good for brands. I think because they're not very controversial. But like Prime, you know, different kind of thing. He's just like super arrogant, but like a ripping fella. Like everyone yeah. that he meets says like he's the best, and um like we get a little bit you know with our kind of backs up against the ball when he's getting beef from anyone else because it's like <laughs> fuck, he's actually the best bloke ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it is. It's a it's a new world, and like you know, the term influencer is a little bit painful. But I mean, I suppose that's what we are, um, and that's what we want to be. Um, but I think generally, especially for my content, it's very much just like like lifestyle based. Like I, especially with the podcast, I feel as though I just want to help people in general, and especially young men, because like I was a bit of a prick when I was younger. You know, <laughs> I could have done with uh, some straightening out, or from someone who I kind of looked up to, to, yeah. to really say, you know, like do this right, do that's not right, and so on. So, yeah, it's like fitness based, but um, there's so much more to it. Yeah, and then uh, you were saying off air, but just a continuation of that point is like, uh, because you guys are in sport, you obviously, it's not like somebody's just going to come up to you in the gym and just be like, hey man, like I follow your stuff, like thanks for your tips. It's like you're out on a footy field, and like footy fields in the best of times, uh, you could probably fucking. Yeah talk about this like it's yeah they're pretty fucking rough yeah like yeah, it's it's, it's just a yeah a bunch of 30 year old mostly 30 year old men just looking to fight there's people. an angry guy there's a, there's always one angry guy playing footy that's probably like punching on with his missus every day yeah <laughs> he's like <laughs> just hates his life hates his boss so he goes out on saturday just to kill people <laughs> yeah literally just I remember there was this guy from the basin and he was i was actually scared of him like this guy <laughs> he's like he's gonna kill something like, he had the look in his eye um, just to run through people. Yeah. He pre- proceeded to call, to call us steroided wogs as well. Because there was a few, when I was playing at Temple, so there was nice. a few Greeks and Italians. So, But I, I just remember that one guy, I've never forgotten him. I'm like, this guy, and that epitomizes that like yeah. footy yeah. player that's going to kill someone. I'm and like, I reckon you, you combine that with a bit of like tall poppy as well. Oh, I'd absolutely. See you guys, I'd see you guys, because I've seen a couple of the yeah. Prime videos as yeah. well, and he fucking he cops, oh, it, cops it but he cops it but then feeds it by making feeds a video it. about yeah, it yeah exactly yeah. which is I think is absolutely hilarious he makes his own montage I don't yeah <laughs> like looking at that because you see it in basketball this is what I've noticed now because I'm, I'm not a big footy guy like I don't watch footy at all but I've seen a lot of the overtime in basketball like the high school students they play it's like in NBA that's massive you know and it's starting to come up in footy as well and you get this crossover of like youth footy 
and then this footy influencer like character. Yeah. And it's actually sick. But then you see these montages as well. And it's like <laughs> him making it of himself. And it's not an it's not a footy thing. Like in basketball, yeah, it's like a- you, you dunk on someone, you flex on them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That happens on a footy field. It's like I know enough about footy to know that you're fucking gonna cop it. You oh, know what man. I mean? Yeah. Like, I love his playing it up. It's actually hilarious and does he cop it in public? Like, oh, n- not never in public. Oh, uh, rarely. <laughs> but in in at footy, yeah, for sure. Like, he, yeah. the thing is, he's a jet. Like, he's actually very good at football. Mm. So oh, it's always good that yeah, to back that helps. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not that good though. So I was going to say, well, <laughs> uh, but I'm not making montages. I was going to say, <laughs> I might. Start I reckon you. I reckon you're going to get on the montage. Yeah, for sure. I should. Where Where are you playing? Uh, out in Kyneton. So in the oh, Bendigo nice. League, oh. Yeah. John O'Nash used to play out in Kyneton. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that was a few years ago. That was yeah. pre-COVID. One of our one of our boys who or Jamie Kyneton. coaches him. But yeah. Yeah, unreal. No, yeah. it's it's good, but like country footy, I mean, it's just like <laughs> you know, the city, except there's more abuse. Like yeah. and you know, that person you're talking about, like I can think of the exact person right now yeah. who I've played against. Yeah. And you know, he was into me about my hair because I have bleached hair. <laughs> like his hairline started <laughs> back here. Yeah. So yeah. It's, I mean, I was like, you don't really have a leg to stand on, do you, mate? But um, there's no point going back at it, really. You can't. The, the worst is like well, across across the from the sideline. You know, you hear just like some revolting calls, like racist, homophobic, sexist, all, all the, you know, the big yeah. three. And and you look over and it's like a 50 year old mum. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it really. <Seriously>? Uh, <laughs> That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. So are you copying it more from the spectators or the other players? Oh, 50-50. It depends like which team I play as yeah. well. Um, I feel like, so uh, this happened to Toddy, but uh, so Toddy, one of, one, I'm, I'm 30. My, my, all my mates are 30, but he, he was, he's been playing with his team for like 10 years. He plays at Glen Ira. <laughs> yeah. And they were in a final and one of the, one of, they obviously had had a meeting before the game and they had told the players certain personal Details. things about the team oh. and they Just they were like this, yeah and they told that the thing for Todd was he's been playing for like 10 years or something so he's like the old boy of the yeah, team yeah. he's like the old captain and not that it's an old team or whatever but that was just, just what the, the, the club had told them about Todd and he went out and he was like man the whole game everyone was like tap me on the ass like you'll be right old boy like come on <laughs> and he's like by the end of it it was starting to piss me off I was like I'm just copping it for being old the whole day I'm like what the <laughs> fuck's going on do you reckon that happens they're like oh for sure we've got Louie out there boys on, on Thursday night you're gonna oh. get into him about this 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 I don't reckon I'm good enough but I like I definitely know there's there's people like I know we have meetings for sure like yeah. you know get in their heads and, and what to say and, and what to do Um, but yeah it's, it's pretty crazy like I, I was saying you just off air like I was playing futsal last night and kids were giving it to me across the <laughs> sideline. It's like, like, I'm so bad at soccer. Like, I just want to have a bit of a run around with my friends and these kids are fucking getting into me. Are they coming you. just to see your, you guys play? No, nah, they're on the next game. But oh, just really? Like throw <laughs> but everyone knows who you That's are. You. We interrupt this program for a word from our new sponsor, which is Three Kings Wealth Management, which, was the, which is a new age wealth management uh, financial advice company. Ryan King, or Kingy, who's one of our avid listeners and a big supporter of the podcast, uh, owns the company, runs the company, and these boys have actually been involved recently with the services that they provide. Yeah, I can't speak more highly of my time with Ryan. Beforehand, I was really, really scared of money. I just wouldn't get into it, wouldn't learn about it, and then I wouldn't practice the things. But from cash flow to also setting up my future, he's been mega helpful in making this a lot less scary and allowing me to live my life at the same time. So I thank Kingy for that. Yeah, one of the biggest things that I've learned from Kingy is setting myself up for the future, but also remembering to actually enjoy today because I think back in the day I was too all about the future, 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 and forgetting that I actually want to do shit now and enjoy life now. So it's been one of the biggest take-homes and feeling the best I ever have financially. Yeah, so Three Kings Wealth Management, check them out on Instagram. We'll obviously have a few links down below. Let them know we sent you. Uh, they're great people and we we really do believe that you'll get some benefit from working with them. It's actually yeah. crazy. Like Gabe was telling me some of the things like you guys go out for nights and stuff and there'll just be like a line of people. Like, oh, mate, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And it's not for me. Like, it's for, for Prime and Gab, but I, I, I get it a few photos as well. Uh, <laughs> Thumbs up in the background. Yeah, in the, yeah, background. Yeah. <laughs> the camera's getting off me. But, uh, no, it's it's good fun. And, like, with Prime here in town now, it's it's like, it's on steroids. It is ridiculous. It's actually it's actually annoying now. Like, going out <laughs> kind of sucks. It's like actually I'd, crazy. I left early the other night because, like, we were just fucking, I like, couldn't talk to my just mates. Just swamped. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is a good issue to have. And, 
like we're there with footy players and like like no one know, knew who they were, but they're coming up to prime with the mullet and getting <laughs> yeah. around him and that's good. I need to watch some of his videos. This is, and no, this is actually. we had this conversation with uh Tim Taranto. Yes. Mm. About the AFL need to loosen up a little bit about letting players show themselves more. Yeah. Like they need to they need to accept that social media is the, the vessel that's going to grow the sport with the younger generation. Mm. It's no longer... I don't think it's like f- speeding up the game and all of that sort of shit. It's making... No, it's images. It's making mm. the players almost characters of the sport that, instead of well, just... Well, Bailey Smith, he's like... I was in Cotton On the other night and he's plastered all over Cotton On. Like, he's sponsored by yeah. them now. And it's a slurry and, and he's got the mullet and like stuff. Prime. So he, he'd be a good example. Like Smith, even mm, even like example. Prime with a quarter million followers or whatever he's got on TikTok, but... If you put him in an AFL team, I can guarantee you there's going to be more people going to the games. Oh, for sure. Like, it's going to happen. Well, like, bums on seats, and he'll get paid very well, like, for wherever he plays this year or next year, um, just because of that. Like, yeah. Because of his following. And, like, you know, what Prime does for, for the AFL is almost bigger than what they can do on their social media account. Absolutely, because it would be. He's showing, like, although you don't have to play AFL, you can still play the sport and like make a living out of it almost or, or you know, take it as far as you possibly can. Yeah. yeah. So you boys have just moved in together. Yeah, mate. You made geez. a clout house. Big, yeah, it's, we've been there two <laughs> weeks now and uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. It's, it's, it's intense though. Like it, there's a lot going on all the time and yeah. like it's been the happiest two weeks of my life, I reckon. It's, yeah. it's so much fun. There's always something happening and um, yeah, there's four of us, myself, Gab, um, there's Prime, and then there's also Jordan, who's a like Gab's mate, little IT man, and he he kind of plugs away in his room and doesn't come out much, but he gets a lot done. Gets yep. the gardening and the, yeah. the sorters. Yeah, he's love. the housekeeper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're uh, you just just living the life, man. It's crazy. It, it's it's it, I, I'm I'm fascinated by the whole thing. I think it's fucking cool. Yeah, it definitely feels like no one else is really doing it at the moment either. Like in, like the house thing, and then you know just being like kind of 20, 23, 24 and having confidence to kind of post about ourselves. Like I feel like people are that nervous and there's that Paul T- tall poppy syndrome thing. And especially in the footy world, it's people are so nervous to do anything. So we're yeah. like, okay, we'll just capitalize. Mm. Like, I don't care what people say about me anymore. Yeah. I think it's I, a big hurdle to get over at the start. Yeah. Like there was a big, and it like for me, social, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not influenced, I'm not, nothing like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're a mi- like micro. You, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. You're a micro influencer. All right, micro influencer, whatever. <laughs> but when I first started, because you do one Choco video and there's fucking ten people tagging us in Choco right, videos. I'm a fucking weapon. <laughs> all right, it is what it is, <laughs> man. Um, you Addison had, you Ray, had Tom Wilson, and Scott Pendlebury copying. Yeah, exactly. That's true. So, all right, I'm yeah. a fucking <laughs> influencer. <laughs> done. All right, easy. But when I first started in fitness, I was like, I'm not doing the Instagram thing. You know what I mean? And then it was like, is that out of fear? And then you put yourself out there a bit more, you express a thought, an idea, and it's like the first few, like they're not even you mm. either. Like you're, you're pretending to be someone That's else. So true. And they never get any engagement. It's like you said with the podcast as well. The more you yourself and the more these people are invested in you as a, as a person, you get more comfortable. You know what I mean? You get more and more and more. And it, it does get easier, but that first little bit, fuck. Yeah. It sucks. Mate, I can't it watch sucks. my old videos. Nah. Like it's it's painful to see, to be honest. It's but like it's not you. Yeah, it's not me. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, exactly. And same with the podcasting. I mean, podcasting in general is it's a like a genuine skill. I don't know oh, how absolutely. many episodes you reckon you guys have been going for. Oh, so th- of this show where, where this is our fi- I think this actually might be our fiftieth. Oh nice. Um raise the bat. Oh, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, raise the bat. <laughs> yeah, we we're meant to get we went to crack red wine. Oh, we've got, we got three bottles of red. If you want to fucking drink it out of a sippy cup, we can get it going. Out of a shaker maybe. Um but we did 50, this is the fiftieth episode of this, but pre COVID, Charlie and I had done our own quantum mm. lifting. Which is exactly what you were talking about. It was not me. And I was trying to it was actually your auntie. We had a business meeting with your auntie. I remember and she was like pushing us to do all these things that were, again, a bit out of our comfort zone. And one of them was the podcast. She's like, do the podcast. And that, mm. the same as you, I was like really loving Joe Rogan and all that stuff back then. I'm like, oh, it'll be cool. But tried to go too far down this like, I don't know if it was self-help or too structured or whatever. Too structured. Too that was structured or whatever. Well, we've got to have a specific topic. And I used to hate it. I used to get real bad anxiety about it. And I got to the point where I know he, then he didn't want to do it. Then I didn't want to do it. And then COVID hit me like, I'm fucking canning this thing. Can. Yeah. I felt attached to it though. Like I've got to keep this thing around. And then we started this one. And I love doing this one because we like, when, even when he was in Scotland, Two weeks ago, the three of us sat down with Didier and we just turned the mics on yeah. and started talking shit. We had a few Q and A's, but there was no structure, and then people love it. 
And yeah. even last week, we just did the boys, the four of us, and I think, people love it. I don't know. Yeah, you said you listened to a few. Last week's episode, I think, was the pinnacle of what we can produce as a content. It was, it was, the, it's my favorite piece. Number 47. Oh, and then, boy, the fans are upset. Yeah. The, the fans are upset. Like, yeah. You're coming yeah. off. So next time they're cutting off. But uh, it's, <laughs> it's cool. Like, I. <laughs> and and this is like 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 we really want to try to push this thing. That's why I'm like we're, we're in, I, I'm am inspired by what you boys do. Like it's Same fucking mad. You, like yeah. I, I think it's fucking sick. And um and we've been saying this for a while. But the health and fitness or the S and C world of Australia, it's just stale. Like there just isn't. Yeah, 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 for sure. And and it's it's like I feel like it's you, you just put into a box when you're in that, which is like you want to kind of break those norms. But like on the, on the podcasting thing, I feel like that's. I mean, you'd be 50 episodes in or so now, and do you notice your conversational skills are better? Oh, like absolutely. I, you got to listen. Just, you have to actively listen. You, yeah, like there's so many things. And you can also feel it when somebody sits down. Like it's easy with you because you fucking know what you're doing. But when somebody sits down and they uh, they haven't done many longer format things and it's just like- Dry. You, it's just like oh, it's hard bleeding work. a stone. Like yeah. you can't get any information out of them. Yeah. Yeah, we, we learn a lot going on um, uh, having Dill Buckley on our podcast and we were just talking about, you know, off air, like, um, you know, skills behind podcasting and, and that was kind of the first episode where I really learned, you know, like not saying yeah, 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 but whenever, when someone else is talking and just like Absolutely. general kind of skills behind podcasting, that really like switched me on because I was like, fuck, what, like these last, you know, 40 episodes, I've just been like yaring over everyone. <laughs> the, po- the guest hasn't had a chance to say a word and like we just kind of get them out straight away. So... I don't know. Yeah, a lot of skills to, to learn out of it, and and like I feel like I've got heaps more to learn. Yeah, we just years. breathe heavy in really? the mic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah we just, just. I really enjoy um, Dylan's format, uh, his, his mm. content, and I actually found it funny too. He had um when he had some big guests on. Like he recently had Nick Rewald on, and he was like, he goes at the end after they review their podcast. What so do you they, mean? They have uh, they they finish the podcast with the guest, then they'll do like a little review of how the podcast went with one of his other guys. I don't know who who it is, um, but he was like, "Oh, I felt a bit odd because he goes, I know he's a really important busy person. I didn't want to like kick him out, but he's like, I feel like I did just kick him out, and like yeah. I think he wanted to stay, but he was like, I'm being conscious of like, should I, like he's got you know like <laughs> like he, so true. So though. even he gets like these like weird like things like, oh my. Am I am I wasting this guy's time now? Does he want yeah. to leave? Like, am I holding him back? Like, but he, at the same time, he's like, I think he wanted to stay. But um, yeah, they review it, which I like. That's cool. I really like that they idea. Do. So they so it's like now Louis leaves and we sit down we'll and go, just How talk was that chat? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, yeah. he's gone. He's playing here on Friday. Get yeah. into him. Yeah. But, um, because yeah. Dylan's actually because he's another one like ex footballer. I don't know how many games did he play. Uh, he, he did Carlton and GWS, but not a whole lot. Yeah. But his dad also played for Carlton, so he went their father's son. Yeah. yeah. I read it. I, I, after I started listening to his podcast, I, I Wikipedia. He also <laughs> bakes golf content now, which I'm all about because he's like the same skill as me, which gives me inspiration to be like <laughs> he's maybe made a brand on it. No, that's what I mean. He's really good at like, and then he's doing the. It, it was it is it Daniel Gorringe as well, who yeah. was on Big Brother. Who's but again, it's these personalities within football, but they're not <laughs> footballers. Or well, they're not like AFL players or whatever, but I think they're going to ultimately end up doing more with a bigger reach than, and they probably already do have a bigger reach than <clears> fucking <throat> most of the players or clubs or whatever on social media or yeah. anything. Like Dylan's crushing it. Yeah, he's killing it, and mm. and and he gets you know heaps of deals with the AFL and other brands. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of like AFL players who are, I mean, like fair enough if they play better footy without social media, power to them. But like, there's almost a stigma of like it's pretty cool if you don't have social media, or it's like cool if you don't put effort into it. It's like your time in the AFL is very small, like your max ten years, let's say. I would if I was playing AFL and I wanted a life after I'd be capitalizing, become an influencer while you're an AFL player, yeah. grow the followers, get fifty thousand, and then when you're out, at least you're going to get at least three grand a month from a brand deal, mm. and like you can roll from there. So, I don't know. That's certainly like another a business venture I'd love to get into would be you know some kind of management of some form or help behind social media, especially with AFL players. Yeah. yeah. Um. What was it like on Dylan's potty? Because you boys actually jumped on it, didn't you? We had him on. Yeah. 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 Well, oh, you had him on. Yeah. yeah but you're in the. Doing I, th- I thought you were in the... Yeah, he said, come on in. He's big dog, mate. Oh, so you had to fly <laughs> yeah, to yeah. him. Yeah, we flew to him. <laughs> oh. And same thing like what you were saying about like trying to what, kick what's him off. What's it called when you fucking... They handshake you. They turn t- the hand yeah, over. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm the boss. Come to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No worries. He had the good studio. So you had to fly to him. Yeah, we yeah. went to him. And, and same thing like with what you were saying about... Or with what he was saying about the Nick Revolt podcast was like... 
we are trying to kick him off like towards the end. Like, all right, mate, we're like, we're all done, you know, an hour in. And he's like, oh, we're done. Like, yeah. like we're, he was asking us questions. So yeah, I was, I'll have yeah, to go back and listen to that episode. Listen. I'm going to listen to that one. Mm. I didn't realize you guys had him on. Yeah. Um, what, what was his studio like? Yeah. Pretty cool. It's yeah. yeah. Got multiple studios. It's a bit like, like this in terms of the upstairs area. He's got a few like different rooms. Yeah. Um, and like, he's got producing, so he's pumping out a few different like podcasts a bit of a factory there, um, but he's killing it. Yeah, they are. They're absolutely killing it. Um, and you're talking about like brand deals and stuff, but you've obviously just got into a drink as well. Yeah. Like this is the evolution of where this stuff can go. The evolution. It's crazy, mate. I, I can't believe like like where we are. We've always said like we wanted to align with brands that like actually work with us. So um, same with Tomorrow Skincare, who's like one of our sponsors. Elite Sups, obviously, yeah, you guys yeah, as well. There. Um, and, uh, and now 10. alive, yeah, alive symbiotic, <laughs> which is just a, it's a soda that uh, actually tastes good. It's actually good for you. Um, and it's got like the probiotics, which are good for your guts, but yep. yeah, we, we signed with them recently and it's like a bit of a bigger deal to what we're usually used to. So, yep. um, it's a real kind of opportunity for us. And I think a good sign of like what we can do going forward. Um, yeah. with with deals and stuff absolutely i think uh, it's, it's just brand in, in, in like it's a whole kyle trainer thing but like build brand and like opportunities will come forward and if you if you're if you're marketable if you're approachable if people can mm. sort of connect with you like the opportunities ultimately are endless and i, I think it's just fucking i'm i love it yeah and and that that's been like like since prime moved in look he's been here two weeks or something and i reckon like we have we've had every single day just a meeting that is like life changing. So I don't know what's happened in regards that he's bringing a lot of it to like to fruition, but it is, it has been the most hectic two weeks and it's ex exciting times that yeah, the stocks cool. are going up. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully <laughs> the stocks, hopefully the socks are going out. I yeah. Heard socks. Nah, no one's yeah. Buying. I heard socks. socks. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Man, maybe it's now it's time for you to break into the sock business. Yeah. yeah here we yeah. go. Yeah. Back to square one. We'll buy Pop our off. socks, please. I'm yeah. actually wearing them. So huh? yeah. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what's the plan with all the apparel stuff? Stuff. like where just just keep growing just, it or is it something you want it to be like a standalone thing or how do you yeah de definitely to keep growing i think um with apparel it's hard to kind of differ differentiate yourself from people buying to support versus people buying because they actually like the the apparel um i think we're finally getting to that stage where people want to buy our stuff because it looks cool and it's nice in the gym um so the plan is to just keep growing that um I'm sick of packing it though, I tell you what. Like, we're, I think we're you looking... got a few of our members helping you. Or maybe they were yeah, helping yeah. you before, yeah. James, yeah, he yeah. was helping us. <laughs> a good man. He worked yeah. away as well. Yeah. Um, so, like, ne the next step is, is like, getting that off yeah, out of our hands and yep. get someone else packing it for us. Um, and then, like, World's Your Oyster. Yeah, that's cool. Um, it's uh, uh, Yeah, because we're, we're about <laughs> to step into the apparel game and we we know that there are people out there that, would love to support us because currently, and this is something that we're doing in terms of just like evolving and diversifying similar to what you guys are doing. It's just within our own sphere and with mm. our own, with our own uh, flavor, but like diversifying what we can do yeah. for our community more than anything. We only so, offer one service really right now, which is coaching and the gym um, membership and mm, the two the gym, gym memberships cap. So, but um, yeah, yeah we got, we need to offer more because we, uh, we're the same. We're starting to grow this little, little, little brand. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, but offer multiple things, which it seems like you guys are, are slamming. Yeah. And the second you like, you know, <laughs> diversify your, where your money comes from, you, you start kind of, it starts really picking up. Do you have any brand deals? Yeah. We've got a couple of little ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We do. Um, like uh, they're not, so like sponsorships of the podcast, like uh, they're more people within our community that have things that they, so they, buy like an episode or a four pack or whatever. Mm. And we do that. But then we do obviously have like, like we had Manscaped for a little bit, but uh, we were very small back then and they offered me something. And I was like, that's just not worth our time. Yeah, like, they're brutal man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they go after everyone. They've mate, they got the, they've, yeah. throw a big net, <laughs> throw a wide net. Yeah. yeah. But um, <laughs> we've been meaning to reach back out to them because our, our show is nearly three times the size of what it was back then. But yeah. Um, so yeah, we do, we're started to, we've only just started like this, this really started for us in December last year. So yeah. this style of and, and direction that we're trying to move to. So it's been exciting so far. Yeah. You definitely have like huge pull. The fact you can make episodes like just the four of you as yeah. well. Like that is, that is such a, a big selling point, I think. Cause the second you become reliant on, on guests yeah. is like podcasting sucks and it's really stressful. Like yeah. that's mm -hmm. when we hate yeah. it. 
It's like some of our best episodes when it's just Gab and I. And oh, absolutely. Course, all of them are. And I feel like the, uh, well, at least this is our experience. Our community prefers the ones where it's just us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you, sorry, but. Yeah, yeah no, but you, you, you have to do the guests because like, like I'll share, yeah, share this reach, on, on my yeah. story yeah. and stuff and, and you grow it like that. But also yeah, they're interesting best. conversations. Like it's, mm. yeah, it's all, sure. it's all well, Some of the biggest growth spurts we've had was when we did the little, when we went, we went to Queensland and we went to New South Wales. Cloud then, tours. The cloud, the cloud yeah. tours. Because you get the shares because we're getting some decent guests guests on like Australian strength coach and stuff. Um, but then hopefully you get those listeners in and they start to go, oh, these four idiots actually are interesting. Let's let's listen to them as well. Yeah. That was a big thing we spoke about earlier is not being, re- we wanted to not be reliant on guests mm-hmm. because there are weeks where it's just like, well, the next three weeks we're cha- chaotic. Let's just, Let's just pump them out. Enjoy yeah. this. Because mm. there's, so, there's like no planning to them. You just rock up. Same yeah, time every way. week. It's in the calendar. You just bam, bam, bam. And yeah. I'm, I've, we're, we're good at talking shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. Shit talk, like shit talk I'm is impressed. like... I'm very take. impressed. Have, have you done an episode where you pissed? No. no. We're, we're, oh, we're, we're, that was supposed yeah, to be the anniversary It's meant to be the 50th. But we lost track of it. So we're going to have to do like the 50 second We'll Christmas one. I think Christmas special, three hours long. Get pissed. Have yeah. you done a pissed one, have you? Oh, heaps. And like, we've almost got, <laughs> we've almost got camp. We just, like, we like we do our podcast at home. So if we're going out, like, just let's get the mics involved. Three drinks. A couple of drinks. Yeah. And then by the end, we like all went, all like cancel ourselves. You know, we, well, we I have was, to cut it off. So. I was just, man, when I was 22, 23, if I recorded the podcast or the, sorry, recorded the conversations I had with my mates when I was drinking, there's no way I could post any yeah. of that shit. Cancel culture wasn't, wasn't a thing. It doesn't even then. matter. Like just that get was locked up. Yeah. <laughs> just incriminating when did cancel shit culture come around? Have you had any like just terrible like guest spots? Like people come in and you're just like, like, <laughs> yeah, you mate, we're not just saying names, names, but like call them out. Talk about this on, on the next app, which was, um, we had this one like when we were a bit smaller and, and like, you know, trying to get guests and stuff, you you work really hard. We do this whole run sheet, everything we were gonna say, like line to line. And we had this guy, um, Sam Fricker, the, the fucking diving prick. And well, he you've um, called him out. <laughs> you've called him out. And he um, <laughs> mate, he's a tog and, and he uh, I didn't think you were gonna call him out. <laughs> straight no, off the bat. Neither. I'm yeah. a diving he, prick. Yeah, the unfortunate yeah, yeah. thing is well, I have no idea who you're yeah, talking well, about. Flipped off our podcast. So he said we'll be on it uh, we'll be on at one PM and him Gab and I, it's COVID time, so we're sitting at the computer ready to go shaking ass because oh, he like, he's got a million months. followers and he just like didn't come on and anyway so you'd think like reschedule or sorry boys didn't come just didn't reply to any messages Go ever again ghosted so I've seen him come one. on we've had one we've had another who I won't say the name like we did a whole episode and like he's opening up on the podcast we're sitting there like you sure you want to fucking talk about this mate like he's really going deep family ties a lot of issues and um Next minute, uh, I would like, struggle in that conversation. Yeah, yeah. I'll sit there, <laughs> yeah, like, close like, off, you? Yeah, and then we get a message the next day. Hey, can we not air that part, like, <laughs> mate? That part is ninety five percent of the episode. Like, we can't. Yeah, we just. So what did you do? No, we just didn't post it. Didn't post it. That was no it. Worries. That's we fun. haven't had any like that yet. Nah, we've definitely had like tougher conversations where it's like, yeah, you got to keep it rolling. Like you got to work to like get something out yeah, of it. Yeah, you work. We've definitely had a few of them, but I get scared. Yeah. Cause, it, cause, cause I know, like right now, like even with you now, you're gonna. I know you're gonna just pick. You, you do this. You, you've got your well practice. Say something. You're just gonna keep going. And you say something. And it's like they, they respond with 15 seconds, and you're like, fuck. Yeah. Didn't even have enough time to think of something else to say <laughs> in response to that. Like, no, no matter whatever interva- inter- uh, like interviewing skills, what is it? Active listening. Active no listening. matter how active you are I'm listening, listening to that, like, oh, fuck. I'm listening to it. I'm still in strife. Fuck. <laughs> There's fuck all drive. Going. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Oh. Um, so let's go all the way back to the start. So you, when you first started your your endeavor of social media and doing all this, it was to help people with health and fitness. What's what's your own journey been like? What are you? Yeah, mate, like pretty chill journey to be honest. Like no crazy stories. Um, Mum and dad love me very much. Got a great relationship with the family and so on. Uh, <laughs> I, was I was saying pretty, more more the health and fitness direction. Pretty, but pretty <laughs> skinny as a kid, and uh, here we go. Here we go. And I was a <laughs> and I was a a prick of a kid, but like it didn't really affect me. And then kind of got out of school and Gab and I were good mates um, and he was on exchange and we kind of s- messaged each other at the exact same time saying like, I wanted to start apparel, he wanted to start programming. Um, so we kind of got together and created 9 to 5 Fitness just all across the phone. Um, and yeah, just like developed it from there. Like all our sh- stuff early was shit. Like everyone was talking shit behind our backs, like facts, you know, like we- Oh, we, like friends and stuff. Yeah, oh, oh, no shit. Yeah, 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 like of course. Yeah. Um, you know, not, not close friends, but like the, the, the wider circles and, and people still do, which is fine. But we call them weak dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll fucking line them up. <laughs> two, two beers. Where are you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Crack Surge book. Uh, but um, yeah, and and then just like kind of develop nine to five into like we got a really good following. Actually, our first following was was our first kind of blow up on TikTok was a video of Gab doing like like reverse hypers or something where he's lining on a lying on a bench and like kicking back because it was like COVID times. I yep. forgot the name of the exercise. I think it's reverse hyper. Yeah, yeah. and um. And we got the 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 whole gay community loving it. So, oh they, really? They were they were frothing it in the comments. Charlie went viral. We've had one the, of them. Charlie went Fantastic. viral. Fantastic. Yeah. The Brazilian gay community he got five hundred thousand on TikTok, and then oh, really? he gained about five hundred followers. That you popped off. Are in you Bra- still? No, you popped off in Brazilian gay messages. Twitter. I still get messages. Are you you're still getting messages from that <laughs> on Twitter? <laughs> Uh, it went insane. on Twitter. So first it went on Instagram for a bit <laughs> and then went on TikTok and like popped off on TikTok and then it made its way to Twitter. I had a, someone but email Brazilian me. gay Twitter. Yeah. And it, that one, that was the biggest one. You yeah, got I had, a big I had someone email me. We were together. We were in Sydney on the clout tour then. And, um, you got an email. That's right. I got an email from this guy saying, um, I found your Instagram or your, this video from uh, a link on Twitter. And Donnie's like, we never posted on Twitter. <laughs> He's like asking for the, the link. So, so, and it was all like everyone speaking Portuguese, like nice. not even English. And then I was getting all these followers. And I still get messages now of That's like pe- guys just. <sighs> you, you'd have some hectic yeah. offers in, in there. Wouldn't Surely you? you could sell your jocks. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. That's fuck. Is it, is it actually, <laughs> no, I've actually seen that. That um. You, yeah, you can sell you can sell your jocks, and hey, apparently yeah. in the gay community, there's a there's a fetish for watching other men eat. Oh, yeah, I feel like there's a fetish for anything. So like you yeah. could, you could literally <laughs> and, and what like happened to you, mate? Just that. Yeah, you you can, want that. I reckon there's plenty. You can just film yourself eating, and and people will love that. So I, I'll be really when I when I what I know of like you know as if I'm not I'm not influenced. Nothing. Sell it out when when someone asks to buy my sweaty socks or jocks. That's when I'll be like I'm an influencer. Really? Like I've made this. Someone's going to do it after metric. this fucking that, episode. That's the metric. That's yeah, but not metric. someone I know. Not someone I know. It's going to be weird. Like that's my metric for success. Forget engagement likes. Someone wants to buy my sweaty jocks. I've made it. You've made it. Yeah, we have we have hectic offers like all the time. And once I got offered 800 bucks for someone to suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> but the worst part was he messaged Gab the next week and gave him like 1.1k. <laughs> <laughs> it's He's You're throwing kidding. it up. That's fast. Eight hundred bucks. Not bad. <laughs> Charlie's doing the figures. Yeah. And oh, he's crunching the numbers. Payday. <laughs> payday. Easy payday. Um, <laughs> fucking. Yeah, it's crazy. crazy. What other shit have you been offered? Oh, mate, heaps. Like socks, jocks, all of yeah. that. Um, oh, there's one in my DMs at the moment who just he just wants to pay me. Like he gets off on paying people, but I just can't. <laughs> You're not going to say yes? No, I I just couldn't sleep at night. You yeah. know, like knowing what he's doing with that idea that he's paying. Like he owns me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fair, fair. Um, they're, they're oh, f- yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh, free money. But yeah. yeah. No, it's the, yeah, the ties. And like the ramifications <laughs> down the line, you know, what if you, like, you, you're in with a big corporation and then this bloke's posting about it and so on. But yeah, mate, Play he- the long heaps term. of offers. Like, just the socks and jocks. Keep socks it. and jocks. Um, I got offered like 800 for photos just of me and like um, uh, budgie smugglers, which is pretty, like, I wear budgie smugglers yeah, all the time. Yeah. So, but I can't, can't do it. It's not for me. What if you send it to him and then the next day you just post the photo? Just be like, oh, budgies. Yeah, bad deal for them. But yeah. I could. That's a good idea. It's, I might start doing Suck that. When times rule. get tough, I'll start doing yeah. that. Yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we see Louis <laughs> fucking dishing out budgie smugglers on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Going non stop. Yeah. What's, what's that foot site? There's one of those feet sites now. Only feet. But, mm. no, they think, make so know. much it's money, man. Foot. Yeah, but do you know what the caveat is? Like, I, I'm like, when I first heard about it, I'm like, oh, you could just Google foot. You got to show your face. You could Google foot and just yeah. send off foot. I think so, yeah. You have to show your face, but you also have to converse. Oh, so you have to have yes, a chat to them as well and say like, you like that foot? Hey, you like my foot? <laughs> you like that? Has that, has has that owner third metatarsal? Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to see that. Has that flat foot? on that? That foot's flat for you, baby. That's uh, that's fucked. It's but L- Laura actually looked into the foot thing. She was like, surely, because my partner's also, she, she uses social media for her business, but she's like, surely, like you could just post your feet on there or whatever. Because we've heard some of these figures, man. Mm. Crazy. And mm. she's like, nah, you got to put your face on it and all that sort of yeah. stuff. She's like, no yeah. chance. Yeah, they want, a, they want a personality to yeah. Yeah. behind the foot. I think <laughs> they just don't want to <laughs> Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> so you get started with wanting to do apparel and stuff, but what's your training history like? Just yeah, um, through the normal gym, 
Yeah, do you I, know I who Ziz is? Started it. Yeah, know who Ziz is. Are I, you a fan I, of Ziz? Yeah, love it. You know, like I can't. I, I'm uh, not not hugely like all right, yeah. like bodybuilding and stuff. I'm I was not, on you, but now I'm off. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not crazy about it. Yeah, I, I appreciate the uh, the Ziz like the the revolution and all that and what yep. he's done for it all. But um, yeah, definitely like more athletic based. I suppose you know like training for footy, um, but then also just like feeling good like. I've realised, especially the, my latter years in life, I'm 24 now, and I just want to be Getting healthy. On, man. I know. I just want to be healthy. Pack like I just like being healthy and waking up not hungover. I still do it every weekend, but like yeah. have a good crack at um, trying to not be hungover. And yeah, training definitely like athletic based uh, for footy, I suppose, and then also just like helping others is the big one. I've kind of repeated that same thing the whole podcast. Yeah, that's but, right. Yeah. Um, do you hit the weights much? Like, are you are you proper like? Yeah, yeah. Or like probably five days a week. Oh man! Um, when we have a gym up and running, currently in between gyms, but yeah, yeah. Try, and then I'll try and run like three times a week. But it all depends like what goal I'm working towards. It's really seasonal based. Like with footy, I'm kind of just like training for recovery the whole week. Yeah. Um, and then I just did a half marathon, so like I was just training oh, nice. for that half marathon. Um, and now I'm after that half marathon, just kind of training to get big. Yeah, good. I ran uh, like four twenty four pace. I don't know what like the time. Maybe one thirty four. Is that good? My math is not that. one hour thirty four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it was good. And like, I'm heavy for for mar- Like I'm eighty kilos. So and like one. Yeah, Charles, yeah, yeah heavy Charles boy. is just uh, about to get into it. Not marathon. Not marathon. I'll, I'll do the. the I want to do the ten k next year. The Melbourne marathon. To a half was that well. the Melbourne marathon? Easy. Yeah, you'll be able to do a half easy, mate. Easy. If you can do ten, one hundred and ten. Yeah, you'll be right. He hasn't. Easy. He hasn't ran. In six years since no, I stopped playing, all right. The ultra it, shuffle, we'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, we the ultra <laughs> shuffle. The I, no, no, so you lean forward. I've made my own hybrid. <laughs> yeah, your legs catch I've made my own hybrid <laughs> technique. It's the ultra shuffle with figure four running. What? So, so, the, yeah, if I got cold, ultra man. shuffle up, is just he- heavy. So you're heavy. You just fucking feet don't come high off the ground, <coughs> and Faster you feet. just lean forward. And there's short strides, very short strides, mm. and then just. Pull the heel up with the hamstring, and you're basically just shuffling and falling forward. Yeah, you can't push off within about 300 meters because nah. you can't push off the same. Like you say, people yeah, push off and they toe off hard. As soon as you start thinking, I'm going to do this with this muscle, it's just going to fucking. Well, not the figure four. You can't be like, I'm, I'm going to use my hamstrings to run. No, not not hamstrings, but when the foot contacts the ground, the next thing is pull the heel to the bum. That's what I'm that's thinking about. That's not too much is going You're on. just no, doing no, a no, shuffle. You. You're going to lean forward, fast feet. Hey, every, every fucking great idea started from nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you've been thinking about this for a while. I have. I've been fucking... So what was the other part? Uh, oh, the figure four is the pullback. Yeah, the pullback. Yeah. Figure four. I can't wait for you to start running. So you've already... You've got, you've, you've got your watch? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Garmin, we're we looking... discussed before. You need a degree to fucking work this thing. Yeah, Gar- you do. Garmin, we're looking for a sponsorship. If... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. If you if you're in on it, I, the markup on these must be crazy because they always fifty percent off. Yeah, oh, there's a sale year round. There's a sale year. Which round. one did you get? You you got the six X Phoenix. Yeah. I got the six. So yeah, just yeah. the the X, the screen's bigger. Yeah, hence the the X. Yeah. Um, it's but the X. they're both fifty percent <laughs> off at the moment. Yeah, because the seven's out. But like there are twelve hundred. That's twelve hundred. That's I've just I've been accustomed <laughs> yeah. with the prices because I've been looking at them. Thirteen hundred, twelve hundred, <laughs> both fifty percent off. <laughs> At, at, what at are the a, features, Charles? Everything. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Everything. I wanted it for interval running, and uh, you got it now. Steps because I've been I've been. Really when when's lazy. the first run going to happen after the nationals? Straight after. So after nationals. Six Monday. Weeks, five weeks. Monday after yeah, nationals. Nah, see what it is. You'll be Straight sweet. After. You'll be able to do the half. I reckon. If easy. you can do 10, yeah, easy. easy. If you can easy. do 10, you'll easily be able to do I don't think I'd be able, able to do won't 10 believe now. me. He doesn't believe that he would be able to do a sprint try tomorrow. I reckon sprint try would be able to do tomorrow. The swim... I reckon most people would be able to do a sprint try most people? tomorrow. What are the... What are the yard- most people that train would be able to do a sprint 750 try 750 swim, 20K ride, which is piss easy, and 5K run, which oh, should be sweet. Wouldn't be able to do it well. <laughs> Get it done though. I'd be but you get it done. Yeah, 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 not the prettiest be, looking thing. Back, but I'll be survival stroking the side, swim. Side stroke. Yes. Yeah. S- <laughs> back scale. Head above the water, staring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember. I remember from from primary school. Yeah. Head above the water. You want to conserve energy, and you want to be able to scour for any any obstacles or anything like that. <laughs> any hazards. Hazards. Yeah. 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 Feet first down the river. I remember yeah, that the, one. Yeah. Feet first. So, yeah. any, uh, so you yeah. can hit the rocks and shit. I don't know when I'm going to be in a river though. Ocean, more like when you went surfing recently, or, or whenever you were going at the start of the year, were you sinking? Because of your nah, weight, not really. mate. We were fucking. Yeah, we were fucking. We were, we were I think there's an untapped shuckers. market there that 
Surface might be better heavier. Really? Oh, yeah. Nah. I don't know <laughs> so, if we're better at anything. But I'm buying a couple. I'm getting a big board. I mean, because I've got a seven foot. I don't know. Do you know much about surfing? Nah. nah, nah so the I'm bigger not. boards are easier to ride. So I'm, gonna, I'm yeah. just committed to the, the big boy lifestyle. I'm going to go buy a big <laughs> ass board. Oh, the big floaty. Yeah. Big, oh, the big too. one. I don't, I big don't know. It's completely unrelated, but we, I had a proper proper incident when we, we went surfing. Like, I don't surf <laughs> at all, but there was a group of Lebo kids. There's like <laughs> three to four of them. And we were like, like brown at the best of times, like we are. around doing chalk <laughs> shit, like fucking, hey, watch me catch this wave. <laughs> anyway, then these kids way worse, like way worse, like fucking just menaces. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm catching this one. I got real confident. I don't go surfing at all. I got mega confident. <laughs> you got, you had that thing where like you it's are no such fear. a beginner that you don't even think you're just doing, like doing, because I was impressed with what you were doing. Some yeah, of the waves man, you were paddling into. I was, into, I was, I was like, oh, really? I was I'd up be there. shitting yeah. myself and he was just didn't care. He was like, he's got <laughs> like no idea. Biggest I was like, let's fucking do it. I went head first. What anyway, you at? Smith Beach in yeah. Phillip Island. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm about to catch this one. And this kid comes up. I didn't know he was behind me, obviously. And I get sandwiched. So it's like the boards are right <laughs> on top of each other. Oh, wow. And he rode me for about like three, four meters. <laughs> so I'm underneath the water and he's on top of me. Right. So, yeah. so he's, he's on top of me like it's a sandwich. Like it's a double decker of, <laughs> of, 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 of chocos. Just fucking, <laughs> just rolling. And then he gets off. He's like, oh, I fully fucked that way. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like concussed. I'm like concussed. I'm like, do saw it. Charlie's partner saw. So you're right. I'm like, nah, I'm rattled. He didn't see me. He just walked off. Like, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that was my surfing experience. That was, that was a surfing experience. We need a uh, <laughs> where, we were, where we were going. We we're need a marathon. Half. We need a, yeah, half marathon. But we need to uh, just a sidetrack. We need to mic up a, a surfing session somehow. Get out there, Donny. <laughs> Waterproof camera. Get out there with the boys. It'd be funny. Chuck goes funny. at the beach. It'd be very funny. We half <laughs> Chuck goes at the beach. half marathon. So you're not that bad. Yeah, no, nah, you'd be able to do it for sure. Yeah, you just like once you get into rhythm, it's just you just chug away, and then the last five k is like you can see the end, so you pick it up you're not going to stop then. Yeah. But there's some fit people out there, oh, like oh, people yeah. doing a heart. They just sprint at the start, and like I, I started kind of at the front of the pack, and I'm trying to keep up with them. And my heart rate was at 180 for like the whole Straight time. Off like, the Were you nervous yeah. going in? Yeah, pretty nervous. Um, like I knew I'd be able to get it done, but I wanted to run like a good time. But yeah, like people just sprint really fast and then like heart rates up for like, you know, an hour and a half. It's not overly healthy, but we got it done. Yeah. Got it Are done. you going to do more running and stuff? Are you going to, yeah, or is I, it just like, was that just like an off season thing? You I should. Do? Yeah. I just haven't gotten back into it, to be honest. Like, yeah. once I'd finished that, I was like, yeah, you know, what next? Like, I've lost fitness now. And yeah. I've got a long way to go. But just running for, like, mental reasons yeah. is yeah. good, I think. Something else that I saw recently of yours was, um, uh, did Boss Hunting use your content? Lad Bible, yeah. Lad Bible. Yeah. For the cum trees. Oh, the cum trees, man. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> saw that video. That was, yeah. I walk, man, we're in fucking uh, Fairfield. Everyone's got a and story. And I go to Deuce, trees. I go, these are the fucking cum trees. So I go, <laughs> this is the smell that I've been telling you about. I know. It smells like it's it's not super, super bad, but it's not pleasant either. Yeah. It's just like not- There's about two weeks of the year where it's really bad, I'm told. Mate, like I, you know, just after making that video, it's not the way I thought my career would go, but we're here now, so you run with it. Um, and like everyone's got a story of cum trees and, and on a night out, like I'm the cum tree man. So people are coming up and, and telling me about like, I've got six in my backyard. Because it like, went viral. The, yeah, it got like 2.6 million views. And like, they're, they're like, um, oh, you know, it's actually an ornamental pair and it does this. And like, by the, like after I've had 120 beers, I'm, mate, I I don't fucking care. Do I? <laughs> no, sorry to break it to you. Like, cum trees are not. And know, then what? Lab Bible questions. stole your. Yeah, well, they they posted it and then uh, they didn't tag me. So I got all the boys on there saying, give them credit. And then they gave me credit. And then Daily Mail wrote an article on it as well. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a wild ride. So the boys tried to so- sort you out. Now you've been further solidified as the cum tree guy. I'm the cum tree man. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and I'm known as that. So <laughs> you run with Does it. Does it actually I'm, smell like cum? Uh, Two weeks of the year, it's very potent, it's, and then it kind of wears. Are these off. the ones that were at school? Those, those like, and they would They're just be the white, shit yeah. on the floor. Yeah. The white, yeah, yeah, white. Um, I don't know. Every time I'm walking, I used to smell. This smell. <laughs> Never knew what it was. I'm like some manure or something. Now I know it's the cum trees. Yeah, it's the fucking cum trees. I don't know if it smells like how pungent is well, everyone's cum. Is I, what I'm fucking. I don't really. I'm just trying to think. I'm like, I just don't. I don't really sit around smelling my cum. So. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't really sit around and smell my cum, so I don't really know. I can't give you a comparison, but it smells shit. It's like, it's, like I said before, it's not the worst smell ever, but it's just like, 
A bit chat. Yeah, a bit yeah. like, yeah. Well, I went up for the video, I took a big sniff <laughs> and like I actually almost vomited. So like, I need it. We need if, to get if it. you get, yeah, you should do a, a video on, on smelling it. But it's, yeah. It's are we in the window? We should get a couple samples. We've got to wait until next time. Mate, come trees are hot at the moment as well. Yeah, like, I was if you say- want viral, oh, like, you <laughs> cut, a, cut a clip out of this and put, like, the video over it, I guarantee you'll get a few Dunny, views. There, there, uh, there, yeah, let's yeah. go find a cum tree after this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It kind of sounds like it could be a real tree. Hey? The cum tree. Yeah. It, it's yeah, good. like, it's, it's like... like a- a- I don't know, like, you know what, what? I mean? <laughs> like, that could be its actual scientific name. yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. The cum tree. Oh. What's the other thing? Cumquat? Yeah, cumquat. <laughs> the cum tree. Yeah, cum tree. Could be spelled with a K, K U M. Yeah. Like a little fucking accent. The cum tree. <laughs> the little accent. Yeah. The cum. The cum tree. I'm so glad. I don't know how watched, because I only see your your content and Gabe's content stuff on Instagram. I don't have TikTok. These mm. guys do the TikTok for, for strength culture. Boomer. And I saw that fucking video. And mate, I put, it went viral, I just, yeah. I just resonated with it so much. I was like, <laughs> fuck yeah. Well, I think that's it. Like, you know, talking about viral videos and stuff. And like, I'm not a geek with TikTok. But the second you find something that's like, hasn't been said and you can say it, like that's when it goes right. If people yeah. are commenting going, fuck, that's so true. That's what I found. I did one for the... Um, Oh, the, like the flu that was going around Melbourne just after COVID and it was like, you know, the worst flu or something. And like that took off as well. And um, Daily Mail wrote another article. I had uh, a current affair, Tracy Grimshaw. She was in my in my living room and they, they were filming. They, I did what? A, I did a, um, an interview with them. You're on the mainstream. Yeah. And that was just striking like a striking while the iron's hot and while people wanted to talk about something that no one else had. So yeah. that's the ticket. Wow. But so why'd they have you on? Fuck, I don't know. To, be honest, to put, put put fear in old people, I think. And I did a bloody good job. I tell yeah. you what, I got on there. I said, I thought I was going to die. Like, I won't be leaving the house again. And like, I can already really played it my, up. Yeah, really played it up. My grandparents on the other end would have been horrified. Yeah. So you're on Channel Nine. <laughs> oh, have we got famous for a piss take? Yeah. Well, Wait, yeah. It sounds piss. like it is a piss take. It is, but like not for the. But show. then you took the piss out of Tracy Grimshaw. No, nah, well, she, she's on the other end of the. Like a, I'm just, you were just I'm in your just living room explaining my yeah yeah exactly they had camera crew come I got a video of it I'll show you after but um yeah so they came to my my living room and like asked me about the flu and I said it was really bad <laughs> what the fuck because I got put in hospital from it I got it oh like, okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but like it wasn't that bad you know? yeah 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 it's like it, I just played it up a bit yeah like I, j- I well, you I did go to hospital it. yeah I did, I didn't I didn't drink water so. <laughs> I couldn't move. Crazy. Yeah. Smelling yeah. too many cum trees. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Fucking hell. That's crazy. What are the... Oh, man, I've had a complete mental black. Who are the three wild guys that we follow? Uh, Sushi Mango. Sushi Mango. All right. So they he is well... I can't watch well, him. Huh? I can't watch him. You can't watch him? <laughs> no, nah, it's too much. Too much? Too much. Because I thought when we were going through all the lockdown stuff, that one guy used to just sum up... The stupidity oh, yeah. of the rules perfectly. And it was like, like you said, it's articulating something that everyone's thinking, but they've got the creative juices to actually like Just say it in a good way that's like yeah. you resonate with. What did, he, no, what did he say? No, his thing was like <laughs> creative juices. No, that video was actually quite funny. He used to do them everywhere. No, no, he would say the rules. He's like, yeah, guys, that's no masks. He's like, yeah, you can go outside, yeah. but but you can't yeah. if you're doing this. <laughs> like, like, yeah. And he'd say shit like, yeah, you're allowed to use playgrounds, but only every second monkey bar. Like, <laughs> yeah, shit yeah, like, yeah, that. like yeah. You know, some of the rules were like, what the <laughs> fuck is that rule? Like, why can we do that, but not that? Or wear a face mask there, but not there. And they just used to just just sum it up perfectly. Yeah, I haven't watched yeah, any of their videos no. since, so. Yeah, there's a lot of hot content then. I, even the COVID hot- times, like, looking back, just crazy. You know, we were trying to start nine to five, and, um, like, we, we'd be, like, uh, <laughs> having to backdate content. Because, Gavin, we had to film every day through COVID, and while we were locking down and stuff, and Gavin and I, <laughs> by the end of COVID, we're two years in, like, three years of locking down, and uh, and we've had all this backdated content. Like, we hadn't he- even hit puberty before uh, COVID. But, yeah, I think you had to break the rules a little bit, and... Uh, yeah. You know, make do with what you got. What was that other guy? That John John Bernard. He was picking the days. He how did he, he do? Oh, he had yeah. a leak. He had a leak. Hundred percent. Had a leak. Had a leak. He's my. Fa- he upsets me because he doesn't do longer format content. Do you know who he is? Yeah, yeah. John yeah. Bernard K. He only does reels, and they're like thirty seconds. Like he used long. to pick the. He used to pick, pick the, the number. The, the number oh, of cases in Sydney every yeah. single day before. 
Berjiklian, Ber- yeah. whatever the fuck. Berjiklian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before <coughs> she would say it. They're like, how are you doing this? And, and he went like, on. We were threatening him. Like, you better stop he went doing this. He's like, it's just maths. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it's that. Just yeah, no and he's like, it's just it's, an algorithm. It's 381. He got, got in trouble for that, didn't he? He did, yeah. yeah. Well, they, they threatened him. I think the government threatened him. They couldn't do shit. What was he doing? He like, got a leak, obviously. Someone he knows works at the, the DHHS or whatever. But he, I started following him <laughs> after so COVID. And I was like, I love it. Because he does a lot of content around the NRL and stuff. Um, and sport and that kind of thing. And I, I love his content. And then later, my brother goes, "You know, he was the uh, he was that guy, the fucking." Mm, and I put yeah. to, and I was like, "Oh my god, I didn't realize." But his content's great. I oh, love he's it. got a twin brother as well, doesn't yes. he? Yes, yeah. yeah. They do things where like they'll go, they go out, surely they go out, yeah. and like they'll swap. They'll be ch- like picking, trying to pick up a girl or, or talk to a girl, and then they swap to see if they can notice, and they never notice. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but so yeah, just, they just do funny shit. He's yeah. good. He's classic. Yeah, he's yeah. very lebo. Very lebo. Oh, really? Yeah, he's living. He's got so his new thing is free the thigh. So he wears budgie <laughs> smugglers, and he walked into Commonwealth Bank with Lebanese budgie smugglers. He goes, "Let's see if we can open a bank account in budgie smugglers." And they're like, "You're gonna have to get dressed, mate." And he's like, "What to open a bank account?" And they're like, "And it's just so fu- I don't know. You gotta watch it. I'm, yeah. I'm not doing it justice. Real now, chalk shit, but real funny. Free the thigh. Anyway, more for budgie smugglers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fuck well, he's got a brand uh, partnership, so there you go. Does he with budgie smugglers? Yeah, we're just walking, really. Yeah. Just rock around. You could train in budgies, easy, easy. There so, and they're a Sydney, do, Sydney. Do a squat uh, session with um, brand. Do a squat session with the budgies. On. We could get some. We could get some angles of the undercarriage as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, yeah. As you do def- some, run, the, run the and half there we go. In that's next the year. fuck. That's the pathway to selling your jocks. Yeah, I was at exactly. some Gab's powerlifting thing, and I was thinking of ways to make it more exciting. Because like, yeah, what are your thoughts on powerlifting? Fuck, it's boring. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate it though. I, I, think, I, I think you're all amazing and what you do is pretty cool. But, um, but. Oh, going to the show is just like, it's. You were at AP, what? Which one did you go to APU now? The Nationals in Gold Coast. Yeah. So yeah. And like watching Gab, I really enjoy, but like everyone else, I just can't stand it. So I was coming up with ways to, to make it more exciting. I thought number one is they, because they just make, like got naked. That'd be funny. <laughs> like that. That's just good entertainment. Number two would be like they have to drink a liter of milk before they do the lift. Yeah, go mad and see gallon of milk a day. See yeah. what happens. Yeah. Roller coasters. Yeah. Hamish just, and Andy did that. Mm. They did the, the the milkshake. They do a roller coaster, pound of milkshake. <laughs> roller coaster, pound of milkshake until the first that's one gross. vomited. Good they, content. They come up with the best content. <laughs> good content. They're yeah. unbelievable, those two. Yeah, the the lifting is notoriously boring, and some competitions are even more boring than others um, just because they don't play music and shit like that. It becomes real dry. I think the early ones as well, like um, when Gab was fig- figuring it all out, like he'd, he'd get like really intense about it, and like he'd be like, come here, like, do this, do that. And I was like, fuck this. Like, that is <laughs> not, like, I do not want to be doing this on my Sunday. Um, but like the recent one, he was really chill. A bit more so relaxed. A bit more relaxed. It normally, like, normally it takes a couple of. <laughs> people to sort of keep yeah. helping him oh at well, the first couple yeah of like and then my phone <laughs> mate and i've had to film one squat and my phone's like full of storage i'm trying to like delete oh. enough photos and he's about to lock in or whatever they call it and then uh, <laughs> and then it didn't get filmed and i told him and he wasn't happy and i was just like you know fuck this but the last one we had a videographer <laughs> there and this. um you know it's good to support yeah it is a good sport it, for the spectator though without a doubt even sometimes even when you know what's going on, sometimes it's just like, what? what? I generally leave for two hours in the middle of the day. Yeah. Like when they bench, oh, mate. I go, that's, that, that's lunchtime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, yeah, I don't follow it at all. I've got no idea what's going on. So I compete, you know, I compete. I do strength, uh, yeah, strength training and compete in powerlifting and obviously coach it. But I, other than that, I have no idea who is good in the world, mm. what is happening. I just have. I don't know. I think because just it's similar. Like you hear footy players say they don't watch it, like they don't watch their yeah. sport on TV because it's just like well, you're so in it, so in it. Yeah. It's just like, and I'm the same with that. I just sort of have no interest. So outside yeah. of on the other side, coaching comp day is is one mad. Of, is one of the it's most fun, fun things yeah. ever. Like I'm not as in powerlifting as the boys. Like I coach powerlifters. I'm just not as embedded in the sport. It's very fun, but. Like I love comp day coaching. Like it is one of the most fun yeah. things being back there and being being a part of it, and coaching it, spectating. Yeah. Yeah. Coaching's yeah. fun. Coaching Seems super fun. rewarding. I, I'm Absolutely. coached by Josh Barlier. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, for like the athletic side, and, yeah. and like he just gets so much out of it. Like yeah. you can you can tell he's a weapon. Yeah, he was actually on our original Podcast. original show, oh, the, really? the one with the eighty episodes before COVID. Yeah, Josh he Barlier. Was. Yeah, he's he's a. A great lad. Shouts out, Josh Balia. Yeah, we love him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we do. Um, I reckon we'll wrap it up here, though. Uh, do you want to plug anything? 
No, uh, not particularly. Nine to five fitness. Yeah, um, check that. We'll, we'll link the potty and we'll it, link yeah. your Instagram and, and your TikTok. Start selling cum trees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Strike while the iron's yeah, hot. Make a video it. on it. Yeah. Really I reckon we'll, we'll do the thing. Grab this part <laughs> and we'll go with it. But uh, yeah, thank you for coming on. We really Thanks appreciate it. Me. And thank you for inspiring us. Unreal. Thanks, boys. It's, it's, it's cool to watch. Thank you. Let's go. Done. Nice. Mad.